Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. You can return back. So let me start by revealing to us what is the first key that controls enlargement, controls increase in the kingdom. Following the path of the spiritual man. There is a technology that God has made available for the saints in light. That if and when activated, just leave those under the anointing. When they are fine, they can go back. We don't call them out just for show. There is something the Spirit of God is doing. Are we together? Yes. Increase. Increase. Three people are running out now by the anointing. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. The power of God is coming and is a grace for speed. Please help them so they don't injure themselves, whether you are an usher or not. Hmm. This is what happens when the glory of the Lord is revealed. This is more than some spiritual jamboree. I know that, unfortunately, spiritual things have been abused and mismanaged. And sometimes when we see some of these manifestations, please make no mistake to think this is just a display of flesh. There are people who fear God and by the grace of God have been taught well even by the Spirit. The goal of all this is to bring maximum edification to the body and no glorification of self in any way whatsoever. Hallelujah. What is the first key? Number one. For everyone who truly desires to step into levels of increase, the first key is to sustain the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Please write it. It is impossible for you to tap into the realm of increase without the blessedness of the seeing eye and the hearing ear. If this is where we stop tonight, then God be glorified. Let's discuss this. Proverbs 20 and verse 12 says, The seeing eye, 2012, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, it is the Lord that made both of them. Now listen, he made them as a gift that there is the advantage of a seeing eye. Now notice, the Bible never said ears and eyes. It says a hearing ear. That means not every ear hears. A seeing eye. That means not every eye sees. Don't, don't assume you understand what I'm saying. Just listen carefully. There is a seeing eye and there is a hearing ear. And the Bible says God made them. These are not biological materials at all. We are not talking of this and this. This and this is only a physical parallel. Are we together? Help those under the anointing. Sight. Please look at me. Sight, even in the physical realm, is a combination of two factors. Apostle Felix, sight is a product of your eyes plus light. Is that true? It's impossible to have sight just because you have an eye. It is the union of your eye plus light. If we switch off the light in this beautiful auditorium and still leave your eyes, you will stop seeing even though you have eyes. So you cannot say I have sight just because you have an eye. It takes more than an eye to have sight. Is someone listening now? The eye is a necessary tool for sight, but not the only reason for sight. For some of you, you have the eye component. The missing ingredient is the light. The most important element that your car has in the night is the headlight. 
not the color of the car not even the kind of the car i don't care what kind of car you have if it does not have high level illumination in the night you are at risk sight listen is your eye plus light hmm. hearing is your ears plus sound you don't hear just because you have an ear it is the union of that ear plus sound are we together just hang on one minute stop You are not hearing anything from me because although you have the ears, there is no sound. Are we together? Thank you. So, the Bible says the hearing ear and the seeing eye, it is the Lord that made them both. Is it not in your Bible that says he that had an ear? He was speaking to human beings. That means not everybody has that kind of ear. Hold on. When Abraham put his son on the altar, when he lifted the knife, if he did not have this ear, he would have killed his son. He had the ear that could say go and the ear that could say stop. Abraham would have killed his son, not because it was the will of God for Isaac to die. Isaac's survival literally depended on the hearing ear. So when you are claiming the blessing of Abraham, make sure you understand everything Abraham had that really made him blessed. <laughs> I wish I had time tonight. The hearing ear. This is the miracle that many people do not have. You want enlargement, you want to move from one level to the other. But most believers have not trained themselves. It says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of devils. But the, the point is the spirit speaketh expressly. The spirit speaketh expressly. But he only speaks and those who hear him are those who have the hearing ear. It can be the difference between your level here in business. It's not the product. It's the hearing ear. Have you mastered the technology of hearing the sounds of heaven? Oh Ezekiel, you can stand before those dry bones and not know what to say. Because we only prophesy as we hear commanded. Could it be that God said many things last year? You didn't move because you did not hear. You were dull of hearing. Listen, the way of the spiritual man is a delicate pathway. If you miss the hearing of God for a season, that can be the end of it. He lifted the knife. What God said yesterday, be sure it is still what he's saying now. It is the same God who said, take Isaac. But could it be he has said stop and you did not hear? It was the same God that said go to Durban. But could it be he has said come back? It was the same God that said start real estate. Could it be that he has now said go to oil and gas? The hearing ear. Many believers stay where God said. But do not stay where God is saying. Please listen. This is a very prophetic message. Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest, and go and offer him as a sacrifice. He would have shut down his hearing. But even at the point of sacrifice, he knew. And he lifted the knife and he said, stop. For now I know that you fear me. He said, and in blessing, I swear by myself, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. 
Listen to me. Please listen to me. I can tell you that most believers are where they are. Everything is right. Except that their ears have not been trained to hear. The next thing is the seeing eye. You may have the eye, but the light that helps you see is not there. The Bible says, when for sake of time, please listen carefully, is God speaking to you? When Abraham came to rescue Lot, his cousin, apostle, he got into Sodom and Gomorrah, and when the men saw the angels, they wanted to sodomize them. Are we together? And Lord said, no, don't bring this kind of reproach against us. I will even give you my daughters. And they said, no, we want this man. And the Bible says the angels in anger drew Lord inside and struck the people with blindness. And then the Bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were right in front of the door, but because they did not have the eyes, you can be right in front of the door. The season is right. You are in the right location. You had right. But just because the miracle of open eyes has not been given to you, you may not know what to do. Your destiny helper can pass you every day. But you do not know because the seeing eye. You can pass the land of your ministry every day. But the seeing eye. The first key that truly brings enlargement is the ability to walk with the spirit of grace. To develop what the Bible calls the hearing ear and the seeing eye. Are we together? The Lord is my shepherd. He says, I shall not want. Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. This is the way means there are other ways. If that's the only way, he cannot say this is the way. There are many options, all leading to several places. Some of you right now by this teaching, if you really have the, the hearing ear, you will have to turn back because you've been walking on a path. God has been at the place saying, listen, can't you hear me? Your ministry should not be at this level. Your business should not be at this level. The problem is not membership. Stop blaming the wrong things. It is the lack of hearing and lack of seeing. Hallelujah. It took the hearing ear and the seeing eye for your man of God to leave his country and sojourn into another nation and remain there. It's a joke to take that kind of risk with your life. What if you found out you wasted your time? Behind the exploits of men, ladies and gentlemen, there is no luck in the equation. You are either hearing or not hearing. You are either seeing or not seeing. Just because you are a prophet does not mean you are seeing. Let me balance this now. So don't even make the mistake of believing. This kind of seeing is not a gift. This kind of seeing is a reward for doing business with God. You contend to a realm where he honors you. Shall I hide this from my friend Abraham? Seeing that he will be a great man. This is a product of intimacy with the spirit. No. This is not a, a, just a, a gift for your office. That man can walk with God. And out of the many rewards that he gives you. Is the seeing eye. That is why it is dangerous. To leave the issue of God in pursuing wealth. Or whatever it is. That is already dead on arrival. For as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 5. The Bible says that in the days he sought the Lord and for as long as he sought the Lord, 
The Bible says the Lord made him to prosper. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, who made him to prosper? God made him to prosper. Go to verse 15 of the same verse. Let's read the last sentence, verse 15. The Bible says he works great and he became famous because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. Until he became strong. We don't just become strong. We are made strong. South Africa, please hear me, House of Treasures, the body of believers. Excelling in this end time will be more than, it, would, it will require more than a well-intentioned heart. You will need to train your hearing and you will need to train your seeing. There are many parents today who have led their children to paths that are inconsistent with God's program for their destiny because they did not have the seeing eye and the hearing ear. There are many people doing business today that they cannot secure the favor of God because that is not the blueprint of God for them. There are many people today who were doing what God said yesterday. That's why they prospered yesterday. But God said something else today I told you the power of God follows what God is saying. So if God moved this way in 2000 and I align with him, you will see increase. But if God has moved this way and I refuse to move, are we together? Apostle, I heard God. You are right. But are you hearing God now? The Spirit speaketh expressly. Please, those of you in ministry, this is not a pastor's conference, but I want you to please, by the message of God, listen carefully. Do not get too familiar with the pathway that was given to you yesterday. God is dynamic, and you must master the navigation system of the Spirit. You must know when seasons come to an end. You must know when the, your relevance in physical locations come to an end. Not knowing this can cost you, you can abort 30 years of relevance because you missed a moment of sight. Watch this. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Listen to me. When Jesus resurrected apostle, the Bible says the disciples who had been trained under his mentorship, they came quickly because I want to show you now how to get the hearing and the seeing eye. Are we together? They came to the grave and looked and they did not see anything there. They went back in fear. But the Bible said a woman. A woman got to the sepulcher and she looked and she remained there. She didn't go. She kept looking and kept looking and kept looking. And when she kept looking, she saw a man moving in the garden. And she said, where have they taken my Lord? And she looked again. She said, Rabboni. She wanted to touch me. She said, do not touch me. But you have seen me indeed. Now because you have seen, I empower you. Go and tell them what you have seen. Listen. This is an, a prophetic adumbration of what God is doing in the church in the end time. There are people who have not been mandated to go because they have not stayed to see. It is only the one who saw the resurrected Christ. Don't tell me I saw the crucified Christ. Congratulations. But we are talking about the one who has risen. She saw. The disciples came to the same location. They didn't see anything. But now, Mary stood. She waited. Nothing else was important. She stayed there. And her reward for remaining was that she saw. And she was commissioned by reason of having a seen eye. Go to the disciples, the first person to announce the resurrection. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Hagar, having been driven by Sarah and Ishmael, they were in the wilderness. 
She was about to die of thirst, yet there was an oasis in that wilderness, but she could not see it. She was crying. The young lad was crying. And the Bible says the Lord heard the voice of the young lad and he came to Hagar. What is this? I'm about to die. He said, no, look. And immediately she saw an oasis. When Abraham stopped at the command of God from killing his son, he said, where then will I get the sacrifice? And he said, look, all the while, there is a ram that has been there. Only God knows how many things are around you. But simply because of the absence of the seeing eye. The Lord just gave you a prayer request tonight. The seeing eye. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my word and set myself upon the tower that I will see what the Lord will say unto me. The assignment of revelation is to make you see what God is saying. To see. You can doubt what you hear, but you cannot doubt what you see. I can hear someone speak and say, oh, it sounds like this one. You can pick a call and sometimes you need to say, who is this? But you don't look at someone and say, who is this? They will say you are suffering from dementia or something. If I see Apostle Felix, even though there are thousands of people here, I know that he's here because of the power of sight. Put off the light. I can bump into him and not even know. That was the true light that lighted every man. That was the true light that lighted every ministry. That was the true light. Lord, where is my place? Where is my portion in South Africa? Where is my portion in, in the global events of things you are doing? You are a man of God. It's time to stop going around, just roaming around. Lord, where is my portion? What is it? Show me, reveal to me. What is the jurisdiction of my relevance and contribution as far as your program is concerned? Listen, God never designed for just a few people to be celebrated in life and ministry at the expense of others. But you are at the mercy of the correctness of your sight. Jeremiah 1 verse 11. Jeremiah 1 verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, I have spoken to you and you have heard me, but it's not your ears I need alone. It says, what seest thou? And Jeremiah said, I see a rod of an almond tree. The reply, verse 12, thou hast seen correctly. It means you can see wrongly. It is possible to see men as trees. It is possible to see your destiny helper as an enemy. It is possible to see a prophet as your brother. Thou hast seen correctly. It says, for I will hasten my word that you have seen. Not my word that is available. The one you have seen. Amplified says, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Listen. Listen now. You see, what makes others to expand and increase, whether in ministry or in business? It is not just because God decided to handpick them as against others. They found out that your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon your ability to hear and your ability to see. Are we together now? And they did what Mary did. Now, pay attention. Do you know what Mary did? Mary waited upon the Lord. Do you know what it means to wait upon the Lord? To wait upon the Lord is not just to fast. <laughs> to wait upon the Lord means to honor his person to the point that if he does not speak and give you a direction, you are not moving. Moses... 
Moses said, do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us. In other words, I am not ready to labor in vain. I know, I know the risk that I will incur sojourning without the guarantee of your presence. He said, we are in a hurry. We want to get to the other side, but be rest assured, we are not such in a hurry as to go without you. Let me tell you the truth. Those who run are those who wait. It's a mystery in this kingdom. The secret of speed is to master the art of waiting. This is the secret behind the grace and the glory of great men. Those who seem to be running at a speed that cannot be explained are people who have mastered the art of the altar. They know the value of waiting until his word comes. Remember, prophet Samuel as a baby, the first thing he did to hear the voice of God was he slept close to the ark. The secret of hearing him is to make sure you are not far from the ark. Hmm. Above the cherubims, below the mercy seat, there I will meet with you. For as long as your spiritual life and your work with God is just a necessary activity, I need to hurry up and make money. When I come back, I will bribe God with five or ten minutes of time. Forget about increase and forget about enlargement. Listen carefully. When I teach you the other factors, I will be showing you something very profound. There are many people who's not rising is not demonic. It was God himself that kept them at that level as an act of his mercy because the kind of stamina it takes to survive the attacks. Listen, there are demonic spirits that follow mantles, not men. They don't care who the individual is. All they are concerned, if you are Elijah, Jezebel is looking for you. She's not looking for the man, Elijah. She's looking for the one who has the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. If you are Samson, prepare. Delilah is not a woman. Delilah is a spirit that distracts. Only personified in a woman. If you are Moses, don't talk about leading people till you know what to do with Pharaoh. There are many people who want to rise and have not mastered the art and the stamina. There are realms, my brothers and sisters, where you must be equipped with the wisdom. Your hands must be taught to fight. There is a technology to remain. Listen, when God vets your stability spiritually, it becomes more profitable for you to leave you at that realm than to waste your life by bringing you increase. Apostle, can God expand me and give me 10,000 members? My brother, the dynamics of managing the realm of the spirit and managing the realm of men with that level of influence, you, you can hate something God gave you because you were not prepared for it. I want to become a global voice. I want people to hear me across every continent. And the realm of the spirit vets you. No, no. The level of pride that is in you. The devil will not even have to fight you. By yourself you will die. Are we together? Hear me. Make sure before you help people, find out who is keeping them where they are. Because you see, the anointing was only designed to fight what is against the will of God. So you need to understand that the person you are trying to lift, verify whether it is a demonic interruption that is keeping the person there. It may be God keeping that person because there are things to learn. And you may hurry people into seasons they are not matured for. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2 and 
verse 52, and Jesus increased. Another version will say Jesus grew. I like the word grow. Grow is not just increase. Grow is increase. Honoring time and honoring knowledge. To grow does not just mean to increase. To grow means to increase as supervised by seasons and as supervised by knowledge. It is a risk to obtain things without growth. That's why God programs seasons. No matter how glorious the baby in the womb of a woman is, she will not get pregnant after. You can only pray for grace to endure, not to reduce nine months to two weeks. It does not mean God cannot do it. There is something that both the mother and the baby, that nine months was designed to do something in both of them. If women gave birth in only two weeks, we'll be dead already in the earth. Are we together? Because we would not even have the capacity to manage the inhabitants on the earth. Number two, there is, there is an emotional connect between the woman and her baby. It takes an extended period for it to build. The Bible says in Matthew 25, when you read from verse 14 and 15, talking about the parable of the talents, it said he gave unto one five talents. He gave unto another two talents. He gave unto one one talent. Not according to his love for them, but according to their several capacities. In fact, did we title tonight's message? Write it. Building capacity for increase and enlargement. Building capacity for increase and enlargement. The Bible says he gave one five and one two and one one. When you read this story, you see, it looks very simple. All of them had challenges. They had challenges that were peculiar to what they were given. The person who was given five, his challenge is complacency and pride because he, he was the highest to be given there. So that man had to manage complacency and pride. The guy given two had to manage jealousy, the humility to learn from the person who had five. Are we together? And the admittance that someone was clearly better than him. I can tell you how his two became four. He learned from the one who turned five to ten. The guy who was given one, you can see that the giver was right to have given him one. He loved all of them. If you were like me, I would have seen the guy with one and said, God, you can't do this to this man. I would take some of my five and give him and destroy the man. You can see that that gift of one was even an act of mercy. Watch how he responded to the owner. The Bible says he was a lazy man and he went and buried it. You bury seeds, not talents. When you bury seeds, you are right. But when you bury talents, you are wrong. Are we together? He comes for accountability, the owner now, and he says, I know who you are. You are a hard man. You like reaping where you did not sow. Look at all the things that were in that man. Offense. Look at the things that will stop him from becoming the five talent man. He was speaking to the owner. I know you are a hard man. I don't fear anybody. You like reaping where you did not sow. I only did you a favor to even keep it. Here is your one. And he looked at him. He said, you are a wicked and unprofitable. Other version to say slothful. That means you are a wicked and lazy man. Two serious things. To be lazy is sin. Both Satan and God can use you if you are lazy. Because whether it is Satan or God, it will require diligence. 
Whether you want to be a herbalist or you want to be a serious man of God, you still need diligence. You will not be useful to any of them. And then you are wicked again. Look at what was hiding in that man. Now hear me. I hope that man is not you. I hope that man is not the person looking at me now. Hmm. If that is you, don't ask why you still have one talent after 10 years. He just answered you. When people see me by the grace of God, the first thing they want is an impartation. They want a double portion. Others even say four times. And I don't mean to be sarcastic, but I look at them with deep compassion. Knowing for sure that they do not know what they are saying. Mm. Elisha asked Elijah for double portion. <laughs> He didn't know what he asked for. Look at how Elisha died. For you to collect Elijah's double portion, you must master the law of life. Elisha died. Listen carefully. The anointing was still on him to bring back the dead. Don't carelessly just say, I want certain portions. This man is a billionaire. I want double portion. The first instruction God will give you is to sow everything. Then you will reject it and say, God forbid. He said, but that's what the guy did. I want to be Abraham. Are you ready to do the works of Abraham? If it is true that Abraham is your father. Then when you hear me say, take your only son. Don't say he's a demon. That means if you want twice what Abraham had, you are not only going to carry your son, you will carry yourself too. I hope I'm not wasting your time tonight. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. You want the seeing eye and you want the hearing eye. The price is all of God. You must seek him more than life. You must seek him. Listen, you must forget about the subject of enlargement. Forget about the subject of ministry. Forget about the subject of money and business. This is how to have all the things I just mentioned. You must forget about them and there must be only one person who is the object of your obsession. For when you find him, you will find it. When he calls men, he does not call men to follow it. Apostle Felix, he says, follow me and I will make you. There are many people today, everything they want is just physical results of increase and all of that. And there's nothing wrong except that in the economy of God, in order to get anything and for it to profit you, you must forget about it and focus on the giver and the owner. Because in this kingdom, we are not owners. Owners are rebels. If you ever become, I know that it's called an ownership conference and I understand what you mean. Are we together? In terms of management and physical responsibility. But let me tell you this, listen carefully. We are stewards. A steward is a trustee. I listened to something you said that was very profound, Apostle Felix. How that you, were, you dropped your car to pick up the land for this ministry. It blessed me so much. I said, that's right. That you can throw away everything literally and say, Lord, if it is for your house, if it is for your glory, if it is for your fame, there are many of you sincerely, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, you are not ready for kingdom, wealth, and prosperity. Not this version of you. No, sir. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Forgive me. There are many of us, we are not ready for the kind of increase we are praying for. I know you are ready when it does not matter to you again. I know you are ready when the only one that matters is God. 
in the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, things. Not in the beginning, anointing. Not in the beginning, power. Not in the beginning, gifts. As wonderful as these things are, they only draw their relevance to your life to the degree to which it becomes the epicenter of your focus. Show me a man whose obsession is just acquiring things. I show you a man who is a risk to himself and to others. Mary had many things to do with her time. But she forgot everything and she kept looking. It takes time to know God. It takes time to find him. The way you create that time is by placing value on him above every other thing. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Until there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Listen. If there is any secret behind the life of this man you see by the privilege of God's grace, I will tell you. It is because by the Spirit of God, he brought me to a point where sincerely without any sense of pride, there is absolutely nothing in this life, nothing in this life that sustains the power to take his place. I will close down ministry a thousand times. And I'm not just saying this because I'm on stage. You want to know the secret behind the jealousy of God invested in certain men? Vet their passion for him. Not their passion for his hand. Their passion for his heart. My son, give me your heart. Hallelujah. There are testimonies I cannot begin to share. They will sound like pride. But when you get to that realm, you see, the Bible says no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of man what God has in store. It defines those who will be beneficiaries of it. For them that love him, not them that pray to him, not them that study scriptures, them that love him. There are realms that only lovers can understand the dynamics in that realm. There are rooms in your house that even your family members may not have access to. The inner chamber of the king is for those who love him. Listen, there is a way that you can love the Lord so much, he will take someone's prayer request and give you as a gift. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Oh dear. Hallelujah. One time a group of gentlemen, it was a real estate company, they came to me and they came to greet me and say, Apostle, we entered a covenant with God that anywhere around the world we build our estate, your house must be there. I don't want to tell you how many houses they have built. I've not even gone to them. And yet, many people would not pay attention to God. You ask them why. They say, listen, I need to complete this project. You complete it by forgetting about it and focusing on it first. Because if it does not speak, there is nothing to hear. If it does not reveal, there is nothing to see. But it is only in his light that we see light. Have you placed that kind of value on the Lord Jesus? Businessmen, do you have times when you shut down? Doesn't matter who is calling you and it doesn't matter what project is on ground. Let your allies know that before you became, there was one who made you. Now, see, unbelievers understand this. There are times you call them and they tell you, I'm doing all kinds of incantations. They don't hide it because it is the basis of their strength and confidence. 
There are many men of God by reason of this teaching. You need to shut down on many aspects of ministry and renew your relationship. You have become a preacher, no longer a lover of Jesus. There are realms where preachers cannot enter. There are realms where businessmen cannot enter. There are time, realms where no matter what your Greek and Hebrew is, you cannot enter. It takes your past is your love. That you get to that point and you are not talking things, you are talking him. Lord, I'm here because I love you. I'm here because you are everything to me. You are here because you are my life and you are my wisdom. I love you more than money. I love you more than cars and houses. Let everything truly fade. And God says, in the midst of this plenty, and say, Lord, I remember you. You picked me from nothing and you brought me to this level. If you never lift me, I am still grateful. The hearing ears and the seeing eyes. Let me give you the last key and then we're done. All of this is just point one. Waiting and spending time with God is the first strategy to hearing and seeing. The second is the mystery of gratitude. Listen carefully. You want to hear and you want to see for the next level, you must lavishly, in gratitude, celebrate his faithfulness for the current level. Sometimes our desire for more, that was the mistake of the man with one talent. If I were the man with one talent, I would have said, thank you. I confess my inefficiency. Clearly you were right for giving me one, but I am even grateful for your mercy. Let me tell you the truth. He would have promoted him to two or to five. Father, thank you for this bike. But when will my SUV come? And God says, the day you recognize that the earth is the Lord's and that gratitude is the lift that takes you to another level. Many people are unable to celebrate God. You have a church with 30 people and you vent your frustration even on the members. They know you are angry. Not knowing the price of every one of them is the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you for giving me two children. I am grateful. In as much as I'm trusting for four or five, I cannot but lavishly bless you. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out your praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Listen. Show me one who knows how to see what God has done. I will show you the one who will keep seeing what God is doing. There are times when I return and I get down my knees and I say, Father, they call me all kinds of names, but your boy is still here. The one you found. That may, I never get to a point where I come to him as though we are colleagues. I come with confidence, but not stupidity. My father is God. I must acknowledge him as both father For his many great wonders in my life. There are many things I know he will do. But I have to thank him. Listen. Someone this is why you came tonight. The reason why you have not had the voice of God. You have not had direction for the next season. Is your life has been mad with ingratitude and anger and annoyance. Lord look at what you are doing for this person. We pray together. Is it that you did not hear me? Listen. Remember. This night, you are the man with five talents, or two, or one. The guy with five got five more. The guy with two got two more. The guy with one got zero. That means something 
with ingratitude equals to nothing. It's an equation in the spirit that there is something you can do to what you already have that will make what you already have leave you. It is ingratitude. In the kingdom, one plus a factor equals zero. Ten plus a factor equals zero. One thousand plus a factor equals zero. And that factor is ingratitude. Anything plus ingratitude is equal to zero. The realm you currently are now plus ingratitude, you will deplete until you get back to where you started from. Someone needs to go back home tonight and say, Father, while I'm trusting you for increase, I am sorry for not, not acknowledging your faithfulness. I know that I did not have a job from January till September, but you have kept me. It's a mystery how I have survived with my children. As a single mom, you have kept me. By February, I thought I would not live on to March. And here is me, September. While I'm trusting you for increase, I want to take the time and let you know that I love you and I am grateful. Oh, that is good sound in the ears of the Father. Your thanksgiving is automatically your application for the next level. We apply for the next level by giving thanks for the current level. I'm wrapping up. I want you to learn this. You are at a level of the anointing and you desire more. It's not just about, oh God, give me more. God, you are not fair. Look at how anointed people are and I'm here as if you didn't call me. You pray like that, just remember one talent. One talent. Anytime you are holding only one, remember that one talent is about to leave. But for someone, you can go down your knees. I came from a family of idol worshippers. Thank you for my salvation. This is someone who wants increase. I would have died in an accident in 2005. Thank you. Thank you. And while you are saying it, the devil is saying, remember, go straight to the point. You have needs. When God gives you a loaf of bread and you say, Lord, where is the jam or the butter? You will not see that bread again. Are we together? Yes, sir. The way to ask for butter is to say, Father, thank you that I can be trusted with a loaf of bread. You will turn back and see a basket of bread. Lord, you even trusted me with a basket. Then he will give you a bakery. We're about to pray. Tomorrow I'm going to be teaching you the warfare dimension of enlargement. There are many things we are going to learn. And then I will show you the mystery of the prophetic. Hmm. That the hand of one prophet can determine the victory of a battle. Not how sharp your sword is. One prophet. And when Moses was tired, you would think they would say, okay, let me hold it. It's not about holding it. It's about the covenant that backs the hand holding it. There are things God is opening our eyes. Just this already. Because there are giants in every mountain. This is just an introduction in my session tonight. A foundation just to help us understand the spiritual dimension that we need to enlarge capacity. Until you understand the warfare dimension of possession, there are rules of engagement. No. No. There are no empty lands. There are giants everywhere. You must know when to fight and you must know when to blow the shofar. There are, there, are, there are mysteries of victory on the battleground. If you get to Jericho with a knife, you will die. And if you get to the field with the Philistines and all you have is a trumpet, you will die. You need to know when to bring which. That is for tomorrow. Please rise upon your feet.
Can I plead with you that we pray in the spirit for one minute? Please, let's minimize movement. This one minute prayer you are praying is a cry from your spirit. More of you, oh God. That you become the epicenter that I not only seek it, it is you that I hunger and love. And I'm rededicating myself and making a commitment that in a bid to experience enlargement, become my obsession and my priority tonight. Open your mouth and pray. In one minute, someone is praying. Saparakash Kadavande Seleketo Prakasa Diaba Shabros Kadi Shalasopria Akato Shalem Brahaskiate. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Do not forget that victory is established in the realm of the spirit first. Anything you need to correct in the physical realm, the first port of call is the realm of the spirit. This is the path of the spiritual man. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. We move from one stride after another upon the strength of this intelligence that when God is with you and you understand the modus operandi of the realm of the spirit, your life becomes an unending wonder. Layer after layer. When people think they have exhausted a dimension of you, here you come again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please listen to me. The sun, according to our knowledge of geography, has been rising and setting for millions of years. We have never complained and said we are tired of you. That is how your destiny should be. People should never get to a point where they feel they've seen all of you. It is the same sun, yet people come to the earth and still transit and everybody rejoices when the morning comes. I was speak from the airport this morning and very interesting, you have a, a, across your region here, it was about 4.30, 5.30 and it was already very bright. I said, interesting how it happens here. Very bright. People should never, you should not be a necessary luggage for people to carry. Your life should be such a blessing. When people see you, it's like the rising of the sun. They are happy to behold you. Now, hear me. Let me make an altar call tonight. An altar call is a call to come to Jesus. Refusing an altar call when you need to is proof of pride. Because it's proof then you are saying by refusing to come to Jesus that you have everything in control in your life. And the Bible says, listen very carefully. A man can receive nothing except it is given unto him. We are products of God's grace and mercy. Conferences like this, having thousands of people inside and outside and many following across the globe, is a platform to meet with that Jesus. Listen carefully. The Bible calls him the way. The Bible calls him the truth. The Bible calls him life. You can have a car without Jesus, it will mean nothing. You can have a house without Jesus, it will mean nothing. You can have status and pedigree without Jesus. It will mean nothing. In order of priority, Jesus is not a product. Jesus is life. There are many people in this place tonight and many others outside and thousands others following by way of television and the internet. You are saying, Apostle, if you will give me a minute from the time left, I'm ready to make it right with Jesus. Not just as an emotional thing to come out, but to mean it from the depth of your heart. Jesus is more than one who gives increases. his life. Are we together now? The revelation of the Father's love captured in the man, Jesus. This is the record, John said, that God has given us eternal life, but he structured the administration of that life such that until you encounter the Son, you cannot have that life. I'm going to make this call right now. Wherever you are, two calls in one. My apologies, I know we've stretched the time. 
you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus as a matter of life and death. This call is for you. Number two, you are saying, I know that I have walked with God, but for a while, because of pressures and the challenges of life, I have veered off and I cannot say I'm in good touch and fellowship with the Lord and I want to make things right and to rededicate my life to Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. And for all of you who are within this auditorium, I'm going to request that you run and come and stand in front of me. Total surrender from the depth of your heart. No pretense, no, no playing church games. You mean it with Jesus. And where the front is exhausted, then you can move to your LED screen or wherever it is. As I begin to count one to five, I want you to run like right now. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Don't kneel. Please stand so others can have the space. Run. Come to Jesus. Two. To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy We'll see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. I salute you for making this very bold decision. The Bible declares, as many who will come to him that he will in no wise cast away. This can be the beginning of a new season for you. It doesn't matter how your life has been here at this conference. He wants to give you a new beginning. And for those who are following from across the globe, from any nation, here is your chance to make it right with Jesus. Here at the Ownership Conference, House of Treasures, in South Africa, Jesus is giving you an opportunity to make it right with him. May I request all of you in front, please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have eternal life into my spirit. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted, please. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, here at House of Treasures, we thank you for these blessed people who have come responding to the call of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, because you are the only one who is able to draw men and add daily as many as should be saved. By the authority of Scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified. In the name of Jesus, according to your declaration, I prophesy that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, here's what I want you to do for me. 
uh, please, if any of them came out leaving their bags and their Bibles, whoever is seated near them, please, you would be your brother's keeper for the moment that they would be with the counselors so that we guarantee the safety of whatever it is that they left. Next, for any other altar call, I will request that you take your bags, your Bible, and everything you came to church with for the safety and protection of what you have. But for now, I'm told that there are counselors. Please wave your hands and let them see you. There's a counselor there. I will plead with all of you to please move to my left, which will be your right. And um, a few counselors will have a word with you very, very quickly, and then you'll return back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go back to their seats. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please, Apostle Felix, you can just stand by. I'm, 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 I'm done. I want to encourage you. Do the work of an evangelist and invite everyone. There are people, while you were listening to the word tonight, the Spirit of God was telling you, so, 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 and so should hear this. This is what they need for their lives. So make sure you extend an invite, whether online or here, you know, in the local environment. Do well to invite someone. We have a session tomorrow. What time, sir? 10 a.m. Please invite everyone. What you'll be learning tomorrow will change your life forever. And then in the evening, make sure you open up your heart to come. We'll have the time tomorrow, I believe, to speak and prophesy over our lives and to pray for the sick and to minister over the lives of people and that there would be a transference of graces and mantles in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as for tonight, I declare, may the Lord bless you. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you in the name of Jesus. I release upon you the grace for encounters. You will hunger after the things of the Spirit like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, you are returning back home and you will find out that strange signs and wonders begin to happen in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are blessed and you remain blessed. For in Jesus' name we pray. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.